So an ICO is a, is a short for an initial coin offering. People also call them ITOs, initial token offerings. And uh, basically, you're just taking an asset and issuing some token that represents some part of that asset. Mm -hmm. So for example, you and I could start a company um, called like Jason and Peter's Bagel Shop. Mm -hmm. And we could say that we're going to issue 100 tokens, and each token is 1% of Jason Peter's Bagel Shop. You can tell I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to float that, and it's going to freely trade. Right. And you know what's exciting about it is that it makes raising capital a lot easier mm -hmm. in terms of you can instantly offer something to the whole world, and it's going to have trivial infrastructure costs, trivial trading costs. Um, and there's a lot of hype and mania about that now. Um, and you know you've seen like writers like you know Balaji or Naval um, write articles about how it's you know a uh, hundred or five hundred x improvement on the status quo, and I think that's probably true. Um, at the same time, I think at the moment it's uh, pretty overheated. Is there any ICO company that you think is particularly destined for greatness? In other words, the product itself is amazing. People are rabid fans of it. What's, which one comes to mind as the most viable concern? Probably Ethereum. So, Ethereum itself. Yeah, Ethereum did a crowd sale, what they called a crowd sale, which is sort of a predecessor to an ICO. Mm -hmm. That's gone well, but the key thing with the Ethereum one is, is Ethereum that, number by, one, yeah. the Ethereum crowd sale was done when the Ethereum crap platform was already pretty matured. You could look at it and see what they were doing. Number two, I think they raised like $20 million dollars which compared to some of the recent ICOs is pretty trivial. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, no, none of the founders or anybody were taking liquidity. I think that there's a lot of things that are happening that are not, not really great for the consumer in the ICO space today. Mm. Um, so, and, uh, and so let's talk about it from a consumer level and then let's talk about it from a, does this make sense for companies? Because like you were saying, every company should ICO. Well, I mean, also, um, and you, to your point, like your best example of an ICO and a, a company that ICO'd was Ethereum, the platform itself. So that's sort mm -hmm. of like, what's the best thing to come out of? And this is like the fat protocols theory that yeah. a lot of people have talked about. What is that? Where it's like, you know, you can invest in protocols now right. rather than just companies. Right. And I think that that's key. Like we need more protocols on the internet today. So if you could have invested in HTTP or FTP or exactly. IRC, this could have been an interesting investment at some point. For sure. But I think... You know, one, it's not clear how you monetize protocols over time, mm. other than they just have a token, you know, other than a usage token or something. Yeah. That has to be sorted out. Like, how would you have monetized an HTTP token? I'm not sure. So there's some stuff that needs to be figured out there. I think the thing that's bad at the moment that's going on is that, you know, people are raising a lot of money in these ICOs with very little governance, mm. little to no governance. In fact, sometimes less than no governance. Um you know, no real thought towards viability. Like I see a lot of ICOs where the project is is really unnecessary or unviable mm -hmm. or where they've sort of like, uh, you know, what is it called when you like really try really hard to work yourself into a position? They've like artificially created the conditions yeah. for why they need to ICO. And so, and then the other thing I'll, you know, tell people when they're like, oh, what do you think of the space? Well, I'm like, well, the two or three biggest companies in our space just raised capital, lots and lots of capital, and we didn't do it by ICOing. I mean, you know, if we ICOed, we could raise, I don't know, half yeah. a billion dollars in an hour, but we didn't do that. And so you have to wonder why, right? And, and the reason I think that we wouldn't do it right now, and who knows what the future will bring in a couple of years, but the reason we wouldn't do it now is that, you know, number one, there's no clarity from the regulator about whether these are securities or not. And in fact, the regulator has come out and said, we think some of these are securities and we're going to do enforcement at the web-based platforms, which are exchanges. Hmm. People right now are giving tokens a massive liquidity preference. So they're saying they're worth a lot more because they're liquid, right? Hmm. That's one of the drivers of utility. If they get shut down on the exchanges, that's going to drop out, the floor is going to drop out from under this, hmm. right? And I think that's likely to happen. The regulators will just say, listen, you think you're selling API calls or tokens for a protocol, but the people buying it no, they are speculating. That. They'll go to the exchanges. Ah. They'll go to the web, what they call web-based platform because the SEC doesn't recognize these exchanges as actual exchanges. Ah. It was kind of like an underhanded dig at them. Right. Um, and we don't, we don't run one of these, but right. they'll come to them and they'll say, hey, you need to delist these securities 
because we're going to start enforcement actions tomorrow. Wow. And they're going to say, not only are we going to fine you for whatever you do in the future, we're going to fine you for what you've already done. Yes. And when that happens, the SEC, the, these exchanges are going to delist them instantly, hmm. and the f market is just going to drop out from under. Hey, everybody, let me take a moment to tell you about the awesome Squarespace. I use Squarespace all the time. I think I've created a half dozen websites this year alone, Launch Angel Summit, founder.university, angel.university, uh, every one of our websites we put onto Squarespace here at launch and we love it. It costs us 10, 20 bucks a month to have an amazing, gorgeous website and they will even give you a free domain name if you start up for a year. So start your free trial today. No credit card is required. You get a free domain name if you sign up for a year and if you decide to sign up for Squarespace after the trial, use the promo code TWIST and you will get 10% off your first purchase. You will have a professionally designed website. You can pick from all these amazing, beautiful templates, and it works everywhere, on mobile, on your desktop, on a wide monitor, on a small monitor, on an iPad, on an iPhone, Android. It doesn't matter what you're using. It will look beautiful. State-of-the-art tech, secure and stable. It can withstand massive amounts of traffic when you go, vile, vi when you go viral, and it's trusted by millions including some of the most respected brands in the world. I am a huge fan of Squarespace. Thank you to Squarespace, and make sure you use that promo code TWIST. So we do it with our in-house creative and our content staff, not by hiring expensive developers. Thanks to my friends at Squarespace. Okay. Okay.